Hello everybody and welcome to Scale Modeling with Mike Eschie. This tutorial is part two on ship assembly techniques. Visit us at www.mikeashy.com and this tutorial is brought to you by Mike Eschie Publishing. The deck to hull attachment seam on this battleship was scraped with a number 11 X Acto blade held at a 45 degree angle and then wet sanded smooth with a sanding stick. Silver paint identified any flaws and then additional applications of super glue were applied to these areas. This is a good example of how silver paint can detect flaws in areas where more super glue needs to be applied. After additional super glue was applied to identify areas that needed it, and the glue was carefully scraped and sanded smooth, one more coat of silver paint was applied to be sure that nothing was missed. The silver paint was then removed with a damp Q-tip that had been dipped in paint thinner. The deck section seams on this 1 to 350th scale Alaska were very tight, so only a small amount of super glue was required. After careful scraping and sanding, the deck detail is ready for rescribing. A sewing needle held in a twist drill was used to rescribe the deck detail, and a length of scrap photo etch was used as a guide for the needle scribe. The deck detail has now been restored. A 0000 fine grit steel wood pad was lightly rubbed over the scribed area to remove any plastic burrs. Forward deck section voids on the Tamiya 1 to 350 scale Missouri were filled with lengths of plastic strip form fitted into place. The wood deck detail is so shallow and petite that once the area is smoothed out, the lost detail will not really be noticed if you use a deck blue color. Superstructure parts should be reinforced to add strength to these parts and to prevent the halves from flexing and cracking a seam. Another example of reinforcing superstructure parts to prevent the seams from cracking. These superstructure parts are the subassemblies for the 1 to 350 scale to Mia, Missouri. This two part pedestal is for a Mark 37 radar. The seam line has a coat of super glue on it, and to retain the curved shape of the assembly, a flexophile is being used to carefully sand the seam smooth. The round shape of the Mark 37 radar pedestal on the right is perfect, and the top was run across a stationary piece of sandpaper to smooth it out. This sponson has a lower and upper part, and the seam received a bead of super glue. Number 11 Exacto blade is positioned at about a 45 degree angle to the surface and the excess glue and plastic is being carefully scraped off. The superstructure sides on this subassembly were separate parts. The seams around each perimeter received a tiny bead of superglue that was then carefully and lightly scraped with the number 11 X-Acto blade here again held at a 45 degree angle. Silver paint highlighted some excess super glue that would have never been seen without the silver paint. This USS Alaska 1 to 350 scale superstructure subassembly was in two parts, and the seam ran across the superstructure side where there was a distinct angle. Filling the seam and scraping it would have ruined the distinct angle. 
So the alternative was to hide the seam with a length of 0 .030 inch half round. There was a void at the angle formed from these two superstructure sides which would have been very difficult to fill. To fix this void, lengths of .030 inch quarter round were form fitted into place to hide the voids. Here is another example of a seam located at a distinct angle. To preserve the angle, a length of 0 .030 inch half round was glued over the seam to hide it. The mold punch outs on the underside of this Essex class carrier side elevator would be hard to fill and sand smooth. So lengths of thin plastic strips were form fitted into place to hide the mold punch outs. Also, note the tiny strip of plastic added to the vertical framing to increase the width of the gluing surface of these photo etched parts. This 1 to 3 50th scale Tamiya, Missouri superstructure had several voids and hard to fix areas. So, strips of half round and lengths of flat plastic were applied to cover the voids. Once the superstructure is painted and all the detail is added, these subtle additions will not be noticed. There were surface imperfections on this flight deck island superstructure and they were carefully sanded out with fine grit sandpaper wrapped around lengths of balsa wood. The separate superstructure sides had voids that were filled with strips of plastic and superglued into place. The strips were cut to length and then carefully sanded down until they merged with the superstructure edges using a flexophile for the curved areas and a sanding stick for the flat surfaces. This void was filled with strips of plastic which had superglue applied with a thin wire applicator around the perimeters. The lengths were then cut and sanded smooth with a sanding stick. These superstructure sides are from the Tamiya 1 to 3 50th scale Missouri. They weren't high enough, so thin strips of plastic were added to add some height to these parts. This superstructure subassembly is for the Tamiya 1 to 3 50th scale Missouri, and it had voids that were covered with 0 .030 inch quarter round strips. To fill the void between the aft sponson and the hull area, it was primed with an airbrush first. Then Elmer's white glue was applied to the void and then contoured with a damp Q-tip. After the glue dried, this area received another coat of primer. Elmer's white glue sticks very well to flat paints and primer. The photo etch detail for this 5 inch 38 turret platform was too large for the platform, so a section of plastic strip was super glued to one side and then trimmed to increase the diameter. The Trumpeter 1 to 3 50th scale Essex class aircraft carrier series was based upon the old Tom's Model Works resin version. The side elevator framing on the resin version had a backing and that was the framing's pore plug and it was supposed to be removed. However, the CAD designers for the Trumpeter plastic version made the pore plug part of the detail. The first step in correcting this oversight is to cut the excess from the framing that will have the elevator slide glued to the framing. The 
the elevator side slide was then glued into place with tiny drops of super glue applied at each framing connection point with the slide. The assembled part was then run across a stationary piece of sandpaper in a figure eight motion until the backing was paper thin, at which point it was cut out with the tip of a number 11 exacto blade. Side elevator framing looks much better and more accurate without the backing. Stacked life rafts on the right were not stacked correctly, so spacers were made from sheet plastic with the correct thickness so the rafts would be stacked straight like the ones on the left. These resin cast 20 millimeter gun boxes were marked at the point where the pour plug blocks attached to the boxes. This provided a visual reference point to either snip or slice off the pour blocks at the base of the box. These 1 to 350 of scale photo etch catapult frames had lengths of strip super glued into place to increase the gluing surface between the upper framing and the catapult's deck. Once the sides were folded up, the front and back catapult detail area was bent into shape. Tiny strips of plastic were super glued to the inside areas to increase the strength of the assembly at the gluing points. This crane cradle for the 1 to 350 scale Alaska had some strips of plastic glued to the vertical framing to increase the strength of this part. The horizontal strips of plastic will increase the gluing surface with the deck. The tiny photo etch radio direction finder was bent up and then the cross piece was added using Elmer's white glue so that it could be properly positioned. The larger plastic radio direction finder had its photo etch parts attached with white glue before the part was removed from the tree. In both cases, it was easier to assemble these small parts prior to removing them from their respective trees. The bases of these whaleboat cradles have additional strips of plastic superglued to them to provide for a wider gluing surface to the deck. This catwalk part attaches to the underside of a 1 to 350 scale Essex class carrier flight deck. It has extra plastic strips super glued into place to increase the gluing surface area. This crane has plastic strips super glued into place on the inside areas where the part is folded along the photo edge ed edges, which will provide more surface for gluing. This makes for a much stronger assembly. This aircraft crane also had strips of plastic glued into place to increase the gluing surfaces and once the part is folded it will be a very strong assembly. This excess class carrier antenna will have a strong assembly with a plastic strip providing a wider gluing surface. The bottoms of these antenna towers have plastic bases added to increase the gluing area where they will attach to the deck. These small photo etch vent parts were bent into shape and then glued with tiny beads of super glue. Small blocks of plastic were then added to increase the strength of these assemblies. This 1 to 350 scale aircraft crane assembly is from the USS Alaska and it is very delicate. To increase its strength, small lengths of stiff rod were positioned and super glued into place on the inside of the framing's corners. This photo wedge yard arm is very weak 
and it would bend and twist if rigging were attached to it. To increase its strength, a length of stiff brass wire was slightly fattened on one side by running it across a stationary piece of sandpaper. The flat side of the brass rod was positioned and superglued to the photo etched yardarm. The gluing was done on a piece of wax paper because superglue won't stick to wax paper. The plastic base for this kit supplied photo etch radar was too small, so a small plastic insert was form fitted into place to make a tight fit. These two 1 to 3 50th scale rangefinders were detailed with a combination of gold metal models photo etch parts and kit parts. Here are the four bending and curving steps to shape a Mark 37 radar. The kit supplied framing was used instead of the photo wedge ones and .020 inch rod was inserted across the frame so that the radars would have a positive seating, which also made the, the assembly much stronger. These completed Mark 37 radars look pretty good, but they can be tedious and time consuming to assemble. With the advent of 3D printed parts, the level of detail on these Mark 37 radars is astounding. The manufacturer of these 3D printed parts is Black Cat Models. There are just two parts, and the radar fits perfectly on its base. These parts were used to add a greater level of detail to my Tamiya 1 to 350th scale USS Missouri build. To improve the positioning of photo etched 20 mm gun shields, make a jig so that all the shields will have the same angle on the gun. The jig also ensures that the shields will be straight and level. The alternative to kit supplied 20 mm guns and added photo etched parts is to purchase 3D printed 20 mm guns. These parts are manufactured by Blue Ridge Models and they have a high level of detail. They are also very easy to remove from their 3D printed trees. The sequence for removing the tree attachment starts from the left over to the right. These are the steps for assembling kit supplied 40 millimeter quad bofors with photo wedge gun sights and shields. Be sure that the 40 mm guns are all at the same elevation for each platform. The level of detail on these completed guns is okay. However, 3D printed 40 mm quad guns are much better. The level of detail on these Black Cat models that are 3D printed is just astounding. Use snippers or a number 11 X-Acto blade to remove them from their trees and then clean up any remaining tree stubs with the tip of a sharp number 11 X-Acto blade. These 3D printed 40 mm quad bofors by Black Cat Models have only four parts. The two separate guns, the base, and the photo etch gun shield. This is the simple jig assembly that I use to ensure that the photo etch gun shields are positioned correctly. These 3D printed bofors were used on my Tamiya 1 to 350 scale Missouri build. To set the position of the brass barrels on resin 5 inch 38 turrets, make a simple jig and use a pencil to mark the drilling location of each barrel. This jig ensures that the barrels are set at the same elevation. These Black Cat Models 5 inch 38 turrets 
have a level of detail that just cannot be achieved with the addition of photo etched parts to a kit supplied turret. There is even a minute space between the turret sides and the ladder rungs. Here again, these turrets were used on my Tamiya USS Missouri build. These 1 to 350 of scale 16 inch gun barrels had distinct mold lines. They were carefully scraped off with a number 11 X Acto blade. The 16 inch barrels were then rotated inside a folded over piece of fine grit sandpaper to restore their round shape. The plastic was then polished with a 0000 fine grit steel wool pad. These 16 inch barrels had their tips hollowed out. The tips were flattened with a sanding stick and then center punched for the first drill bit. The drilling was accomplished with a, twist, with a twist drill. I started with a very small bit and then carefully worked up to a larger bit. If you go slow, you can achieve very thin walls on the tips of the plastic barrels. If you use too large a bit, and rush this technique, you will collapse a sidewall, ruining the barrel. Pit Road makes pre painted aircraft in 1 to 350th and 1 to 700 scales, and they are well detailed and nicely painted and decaled. The wings on the 1 to 350th scale aircraft are separate. To ensure that all the aircraft have fold, that have folded wings are all in the same, at the same angle, and positioning make a jig. These are some of the techniques that I use to build ship models and all of them were used to build the following ship model. This is the Hobby Boss 1 to 350 of scale USS Alaska. This is the Trumpeter 1 to 350 of scale USS Franklin. All these aircraft on the Franklin's flight deck are pre-painted pit road aircraft. This is the Banner Trumpeter Hobby Boss 1 to 350 of scale USS Arizona. Here is my Tamiya 1 to 350 of scale USS Missouri which I just completed. And it is the subject of our newest comprehensive series scale model manual. This is the Trumpeter 1 to 350 of scale USS North Carolina. Finally, this is a 1 to 350 of scale Arizona kit converted to a 1944 USS Pennsylvania, which was a sister ship of the Arizona. The entire superstructure of this conversion was scratch built. Here's our main website page. There is a huge amount of free scale modeling information and almost all of it is in PDF format for downloading. Included in these free PDFs are my five original scale modeling books, all of which have been long out of print. And here's our ordering page for our new line of comprehensive series scale model manuals for aircraft, ships, model railroad structures, and military ground vehicles. All of our manuals are in color with a six picture per page format and every picture has an associated captions. And they will provide you with a sequenced step-by-step -step guide for building your model. They are three ring punched for storage in a three ring D-type binder. 
so that you can lay your manual flat on your workbench. They also come with front, back, and side sleeve covers for your binder, which are printed on heavy cardstock. The manuals are printed on heavyweight glossy paper. These manuals are value priced and can be purchased from our website using PayPal and they are available in either a paper or PDF format. The paper versions of our manuals are also available on eBay. Just type Mike Eshe in the eBay search box. Thanks for watching our tutorial on shipbuilding techniques. Stay tuned for our next tutorial on aircraft building techniques using photo wedge detail sets. Until then, happy scale modeling.